when the children were challenged, they were not allowed to see their friends. Their sociability was completely cut off. And for a child, we don't know how important that is no. to be with other children. When you uh, have the construct of meaning, meaning in life, your life need need to have a sense of coherence, you know, a sense of purpose and a sense of significance. All these three things were sort of taken from them. Guys, don't be afraid of suffering. There is so much potential, so, so much life, and it's okay to be unhappy, that's normal. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Tammy Peterson podcast. Today I'm speaking with Haub Rommers. Haub Rommers is the oldest of 12 father of six and happily married to his wife, Antoinette. He's a man on a mission. He wants to help young people to find hope, meaning, and purpose in times of crisis and uncertainty. Helb holds a bachelor's degree in sports and physical education and has an educational master's degree in the field of learning and innovation. He's done research on the development of creative ability of disadvantaged students in the Netherlands. In addition, Helb is connected to the Goal Setting Center for Study and Career Success at Erasmus University as a researcher. Moreover, Helb has created a synthesis of the concepts of creativity, strength-based learning, and goal setting called creative life crafting. He uses this concept in his research, teaching, speaking, and coaching. He's currently working on various projects related to teaching, coaching, educational development, creativity, and life skills. I've had a very insightful conversation with Help, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Hello, Help. Hello. So we're talking about uh, life crafting. Um, this is very interesting. Michaela Shippers, who I met when Jordan used to go over there uh, to Rotterdam University. I met her, I think, 2014 or maybe 2012, Yeah, quite a while ago. So how long ago did you start with this life crafting idea? Yeah, uh, actually, it was 2019, I think. I was uh, just done with my master's degree, uh, learning and innovation. And I mm -hmm. uh, did some research on uh, creativity um with um disadvantaged uh, students here in the netherlands and then um i think it was uh in the summer of 2019 i was on holiday and i was reading the article of michaela and uh, also jordan uh on goal setting mm -hmm. 2015 mm -hmm. and in there i saw this like line out uh what you can do like practically practically uh, as a tool and then uh, I did it for myself, and I, and I thought, uh, wow, this carries a lot of potential, you know, also for my students. What was, what was that that you did? Explain yeah. that to me more. Yeah, um, Michaela and Jordan uh, did research uh, on goal setting with students mm -hmm. uh, on the like university level. And, yes. uh, um, and they found that the, like, the performance gap was closed after the, the intervention, but also um, the, the, the study performance increased with 22% and um, mm -hmm. uh, the dropout rate as well with 22%. So these mm -hmm. numbers are staggering. And yeah, mm -hmm. I'm for 20 years now in, in education and I did a lot of things who were so like a waste of time, <laughs> basically. And, and when I encounter something, <clears throat> that has proven so much effect and impact, you know, um, that makes me happy in and out of itself. And uh, so I did it for myself and <laughs> felt very good about it. Uh, I, I know the list by, by heart now um, because uh, I want to write my own scientific paper, which I did. <laughs> I wanted to start mm -hmm. my own company, which I did. Uh, like I've <laughs> I want to write my own book, which I did. So. It's, it, it, it made me very effective, but what I uh, wanted to do as well was make it available for children um, who are not 
that cognitive gifted as university students, you know. Here in the Netherlands, we have a little bit different system, education system. Um, it's like when you are 12 years old, it's like a split. Uh, you have the, 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 the practical children, uh, more practical children. Um, they have their own education and then it's going higher up in the cognitive uh, ability scale. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's pre-vocational education and most of the students are disadvantaged uh, from a, a socio-economic standpoint. So uh, that's really burning in my heart to have all these great ideas and, and like uh, theories, you know, and it's hardly uh, reaching them. But um, mm -hmm. when you can break it down, like... Um, they, they, they can, can use it in a practical way, then uh, they can profit as well. So Have you used your, I, I read your book, Life Crafting, and um, uh, I saw in it that you have uh, uh, a method, you know, a method of, of uh, training, yeah. training the thought patterns. And so yes. have you actually been using this with 12 year old kids? I did. Um, 14 year old, wow. 16 year old, uh, 18 year old, uh, adults. <laughs> it's applicable to everybody, essentially. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Hmm, because the goal setting, the future authoring program that Jordan developed, uh, we gave that to our children when they were right. young adolescents. And um, their ideas of uh, an ideal future were still full of fantasy mm -hmm. you know they weren't they weren't realistic so something that you've done in in your interpretation of uh the same material right. has made it possible for those younger children to benefit what do you think the difference is between what they did what jordan did and and what you're doing how, how is it different for those kids yeah yeah yeah, yeah. There, there is obviously a, a difference in uh, I. I only use uh, like one simple question at a time, so no complicated okay. sentences, you know. Um, and I break all the uh, the theories down in in like simple instructions, you know. And and I do it always under supervision of a mentor or like a teacher. And uh, to help them and to encourage them and, and uh, to support them. So that's, I think, a difference. And the second thing is not actually life crafting what I do. It's creative life crafting, you know. I use my research okay. from the, the creativity part, uh, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a, 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 a motor. Uh, one, because, you know, when you, ha when you set the goal, uh, that's difficult in, in itself. But... Uh, as we know, as older people, um, it's, it's never a straight line, you know. You encounter mm -hmm. all different obstacles and problems. And so uh, I was thinking, yeah, it's, that's so true also for students as well. And they have a simple mindset. They think, okay, this is my goal, and then uh, tomorrow it's done. But, yeah, it's on the contrary. It's very difficult. You have to be resourceful. You have to you, you train your mind to be creative and come up with solutions uh, that are fitting uh, in your situation, but also for your goals, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the difference as well. So I, I spent quite a, a lot of time in the intervention to, to train their minds, like, uh, you know, to be think resourceful and think divergent and then uh, pick the best ideas and then pick the ideas uh, that are fitting for you and for your situation and for your goals. La, right and then uh, make out of that make a plan you know and and also uh, a difference i think in in creative life crafting is make it public and there is something mm -hmm. in in publicity that uh, is so powerful because you know when i tell you my goals for t 2023 and and <laughs> the listeners are hearing it and everybody's hearing it then you can hold me accountable right it's out there it's 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 out there, and then I, I have a different feeling of responsibility to actually to <laughs> uh, yeah to uh, 
to arise. Make good on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was notice. Uh, yeah, I was noticing that. I was. I read that uh, in near the end of your book. Yeah. The uh, mentorship to find uh, a mentor, I guess, to help you through the process. So that's what you mean by pairing a student with the teacher so that they uh, stay on task. So they stay mm -hmm. on task. And um, also the idea of telling, making it public. And I thought, you know, when I was, not even just when I was young, probably also when I was older, I would think that if I shared an idea of something that I wanted to do, that I was making it real before it was real. Mm -hmm. And I was worried that if I made something real before it was real, that all of the, um, all of the spirit uh -huh. would escape from me if yeah. i kept it secret then right. i would be able to hold but i'm sure but i don't think that always worked for me so <laughs> i think it was hmm. a an idea maybe that had no uh no realistic outcome for me so hmm. but so you have found that it's helpful to make it public yeah. to tell people yeah oh, yeah. yeah shared yeah. responsibility yes yeah shared responsibility hmm. yeah yeah and and I tell my, my, my children over and over again, uh, tell it, tell, tell me about it. You know, in, in the scriptures, it, it says uh, that there is power in words. Words uh, uh, create worlds, right? So mm -hmm. when, it's, when it's out there, it's recreating something in the space, in, in the spirit, but also in your heart and in the hearts of others. And then it's like a collective memory uh, that acts as like... Uh, uh, yeah, like hmm, a guiding spirit. Uh, yes, if the person is on your side, if the person is listening to you in order to uh, help you benefit from what it is that you're talking about, then I can see that. And I think that there are children who lack that kind of mentor. And so the mentorship mm -hmm. part of that is very, it sounds like that would be a, a, an integral part of it because if you're alone yeah. and you don't have those mentors to help you along, then when you're talking about your ideas, they don't go anywhere. No. Yeah. And I think that was more what I experienced as a younger person was I'd have these ideas, I'd share them and they didn't go anywhere. And then I started to begin thinking that sharing my ideas wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't useful, but it was right. that the mentor was missing. And so, yeah, that's, yeah. and kids, kids don't necessarily, they can't identify what's missing. No, totally. Right. But, hmm. So that, that's very interesting. You know, I'm very curious how this works with younger kids. You know, maybe you could tell us a little bit about during COVID, you had a, a story, a family story of yeah. what happened with your children during COVID. And I've been asking young people since I read your book what their experiences were. And I've heard similar stories. So wh why don't you just tell me and our listeners a yeah, little bit okay. about that? Great, great, yeah. Um, yeah, when COVID hit, uh, um, f first of all, um, we thought, okay, this will blow over and then we <laughs> see further. And it, 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 in the Netherlands, it was beautiful weather. So <laughs> we, we, the children went out there swimming and like doing all these things uh, that were actually forbidden. But then reality kicked in and, and um, they were like getting lessons via Teams, Zoom, um, and, and suddenly um, something broke in the system and also in them. Um, my second son, he was at the time uh, near the ending of, hi of high school. And uh, yeah, he wasn't doing great before that, but he, he, he hang on. And then... 
something something happened to him and he quit he quit his school he said mom dad i'm quitting <laughs> and we talked and we talked and we did everything together with the school and the teachers but we couldn't get him on track so he stopped and he uh, uh started working in, in a pizzeria <laughs> so <laughs> that was quite a change and then my oldest son uh, same thing he's emotional very stable uh, mm -hmm. and and th th this was a strange thing for him and he was in the army he uh he was like uh, yeah he got his training there and okay he finished that year but after that he had to go for three four uh four years already and of um still so okay then he said this is not for me and he quit right after that first year and he has uh, a debt of uh, 12,000 euros after that because right. you got paid you know and when you break the contract for its contract for four years uh, then you have mm -hmm. to pay it back <laughs> so <laughs> all right and then um uh my my uh, my third son he got quite depressed uh, he's emo emotional not stable he's like mm -hmm. then up there and then very low so mm -hmm. uh he wasn't doing well and and uh my, my 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 children were waking up to a reality in the world that was so foreign to them that it it broke their spirit and that broken spirit i saw all over the place there were a few exceptions but when, when I looked to my students and to my own children, I was amazed that uh, we, we, we don't saw them rebel, you know? And, and they, mm -hmm. was, they were just broken. And, and that upset me so much because I, I think it's like <laughs> you're, you're in, in the period of your life that you have to challenge the system, right? When you are challenged, that's so important and healthy. But mm -hmm. that wasn't occurring, so that concerned me to a great deal. And um, but do you, why do you think they were uh, they had an inability to rebel? I think it's it's a, a few things. But first of all, um, young people don't have like an overarching story, an overarching purpose, and meaning to life anymore. To tap in uh, when times get hard, you know. Uh, my children do, and now mm, they are doing yes. doing great. They are doing great now. But then, um, be because here in modern times, you know, uh, the, the Canadians uh, liberated us. You know, that's seventy years or more ago. So mm -hmm. uh, from from that period, it's gone up and up and up and up. And I think the youth um, needs sometimes uh, a difficult time to reevaluate what's important, what are the, the core values, you know, and, and move from there and build on that. But it was a rude awakening for, 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 for students. And, and a lot of them are still in the woods. They are like mm -hmm. so lost and broken. Mm -hmm. So this would be uh, what I'm getting from that. What you're saying is that the, uh, our society has become materialistic. We've lost our, um, spiritual guide that we always had in judo judeo-christian um, faith and when the children were challenged really challenged fundamentally to you know they were they lost they were not allowed to see their friends no. uh they had they had their sociability was completely cut off yeah and for a child we don't know how important that is no. to be with other children yeah. and to to be out like you said uh conquering the world mm -hmm. we don't know if there's another way that that kids can survive yeah it doesn't look like it though it doesn't look like it it looks like that we need adventure yeah. that those kids need and if they don't have adventure and they can't find it then they give up yeah and yeah. that's a disaster that's a disaster for our whole society because these are the adults of the future 
mm-hmm. to bring us, you know, yeah. our adventures of our lives. Right. Yeah. And, and that is just a, another element. Uh, and, and that's when, when you uh, have the construct of meaning, meaning in life, um, yeah. your life need, need to have a sense of coherence, you know, a sense of purpose and a sense of significance. And that all these three things were sort of taken from them, you know, and, and their uh, view on people, on humankind, on how the works, world works, was so smashed down in a way. And not rationally, but something in their spirit, in their heart, you know, wasn't right, mm-hmm. wasn't coherent, wasn't uh, um, like how, it, how it's always been. It's like a veil was torn away and they could see uh, actually the system, how it really was for what it was mm-hmm. and, and what it could do mm-hmm. for them. And, and, what it, uh, and, and then uh, wh- when it can happen now, you know, what's the telling about the future of their future, you know, and, and things so big. I mean, this was, this was global, you know, and the global right, forces. Right, right. How do you add up, you know, when you are 17, 18, 90 years old and, and you are just in, <laughs> trying to make sense of yourself and then this whole world system thing comes upon you. Uh, it's not good. And it's still there. Yeah. You know, there's still, yeah, because, well, you know, there's all the ideas of uh, energy and where and where it's, uh, there's the good energy and then there's the bad energy, you know, oil and gas, that's the bad energy and wind and, and uh, sun, oh, that's the good energy. And yep. so there's, there's these, hmm, they're making ethical, hmm, they're making ethical cases for economic uh, problems. Yeah, right. And we've lost the ethics in our individual lives. And so how did you, you said your kids are all right now. Why is that? What, what changed? <laughs> yeah. The, the, um, first of all, there were a, a lot of other things that broke us down because our church uh, shut down. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. That was a, a yeah. huge so problem did ours. for us. Ours did too. Yeah. Ours did too. Yeah, yeah. And, and moreover, um, uh, it's totally stopped. It's gone now because the leadership decided to, uh, to oh. stop. Yeah. Oh. And, and oh. my children are like deep in the Lord and deep in faith and in the scripture and uh, like really rooted in that. So that told them a story as well, you know, uh, and it was, it was not a positive story. So uh, for three years, we don't, we, we don't went to church at all. So they were right. on Sundays at home. I mean, for 20 years, they, they went every Sunday to church. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 secondly, my sister, Marika, she, mm-hmm. has, she had this Down syndrome. She died mm-hmm. on uh, oh. like a Good oh, Friday, exactly on the time Jesus died. She died as well in 2020, mm-hmm. just when, uh, when COVID hit. And uh, they couldn't go to the funeral. Right. Yes. Yeah. How terrible is that? Whoa. Still, they are mad at, at, at the fact that they couldn't bury their aunt, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, when I was five years old, my grandfather died. He mm-hmm. died young. At, he was 56 years old. All right. Yeah. And on the day of the funeral, my parents didn't take me to the funeral. They left me. They took me to the playground and gave me an ice cream cone. Mm-hmm. And I was five years old and I thought, you know, this isn't right. And I've no. never forgot that. No. Kids never, for- they know what's important yes. in life. And when, and when the uh, powers tell you to deny yeah. that those things are important, you never forget that. That's, a, that's so, the essence of a sin. That's a sinful act. Right, right, right. Yeah, so it's no wonder we can't forget it. No. So your kids were not allowed to go to church for three years. Neither were we. Our churches were closed, mostly. I think there were some rebel. There were some rebels. You know, I went to a a tea place the other day, 
uh, in the neighborhood. I'd never been there before, but one of my friends came and he wanted a coffee. So I found a place for him to go. And I cool. guess this fellow stayed open and didn't make anybody wear a mask through the whole pandemic. So there were pockets of sanity. That's and true. this man, this man came from Iran 12 years mm. ago. <laughs> So he, yeah. so he wasn't going to make people wear masks no. and uh, close his doors. And I also had my nails done. That was so funny. All through the pandemic, there were these Russian women who owned this nail place. And we would have to, we would walk to the corner and then we would text them and say that we were there. Yeah. And we'd look on the street to see if there were any, anyone walking or any cars. And if yeah. there weren't, then we would go into the into the <laughs> building and get our nails done. But they kept the lights low, and we had to be very quiet. It was very strange, yeah, very strange time. But mm. a lesson for us all, really, a lesson for us all, because it was terrible for our young children. You know, even the elderly, they were locked in there. Old folks' homes. I don't know if that was the same in the Netherlands, was it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they had each other. Those elderly people had each other. I right. know they didn't have their families, but they did have each other, thank goodness. But the children, they were really separated from their friends, separated from their adventure, yep. separated from their meaning of their life. Absolutely. And, and their churches were closed. So now we've seen what that does. And what did it do? It demoralized them, right? Right. When you when you want to do a, like a questionnaire with students, uh -huh. you have to to jump through all these loops to uh, ethical boards and, and ethical. Yes, uh, I don't know things. how you did it. I don't know how you did it. But when you when we look back on this, this was a one giant social experiment, and nobody asked for consent. You know, and that's so yes. that's so strange. Yes, that's right. We were all forced into an experiment, right? And and a D and with the vaccinations as well. So we were forced into uh, <laughs> an alternate universe. Really, my wife, she um, she's she's an amazing person, um, mm -hmm. but she's also a nurse, and she cared for our children. For uh, I have six children, three boys and three girls. And uh, I'm the oldest of 12, so uh, I know what, uh, what children are. But um, my wife, um, um, she did re-exams for, for, uh, to be a nurse again. And that, that mm -hmm. was right in the middle of the pandemic. And here in the Netherlands, the pressure to get vaccinate, vaccinated for nurses was so high. Oh, yes, here too. Oh, yeah. it was extremely high. And there was another thing. My wife is traveling to Israel took the Gaza Strip. She is part of an organization. Um, and and they that organization is one of the few organizations that is allowed uh, to go from Israel to the Gaza Strip. And, mm -hmm. um, and she's also working in prisons, my wife, and she's also working um, in uh, France. You have this, this huge refugee camps because- uh, Right, oh, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. People try to go to 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 London, you know, to uh, to England. So mm -hmm. she's working there, mm -hmm. and um, then you you uh, she was f really forced to take the vaccine, and, and then uh, I have to I had to step up as a father, also for 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 my uh, for my children because they couldn't go uh, to the to the, the movies or uh, like uh, go to a club or or do things like that and. Uh, the pressure in our family got so strong. Um, but I knew in my heart, okay, I I rather die than I take the vaccine. Because this mm -hmm. was so fundamental to me. I, I felt in my heart of hearts that this was pure evil to uh, uh, to force people to do this. You know, I, the, mm -hmm. the vaccine is not pure evil, but to force people. That was my problem. And... Um, yeah, then um, the, 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 the parasite stress uh, like was lifted and then <laughs> everything came to a rest. And, um, you know, the compulsion, when J Jordan and I have been talking about uh, compulsion, the, 
when people are tyrants and when they are forcing people to do things com- com- uh, with compulsion and the, diff- yeah. the, the the change that can be recognized is if the spirit of play has disappeared mm-hmm. so if some if someone doesn't have uh, if there's no voluntary back and forth yep. between two people, if one person is compelling the other person to do something, then th- it's a sign that that person has taken on more responsibility than they can handle. So they lose their sense of play. Mm-hmm. And so we can see, so it's possible that we can see in our society where people have taken on too much responsibility and that the antidote to that is to pull back what they are responsible for. So to pull back what they are responsible for until they're at a place where they're playful and that, and that's what they can handle. And so, so true. And so, you know, we saw that with, well, just people, everyone in our society compelling each other to take the vaccine and to right. wear a mask and to stay in your house. There was all this, you, you know, that things have gone out of balance because the spirit of play is gone yeah. and tyranny is uh, in control. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's uh, but it's, it's a good um, bellwether to yeah. notice that the, if there's no play, if there's no play, then, what what comes in what comes in when there's no play is tyranny is yeah. compulsion mm-hmm. and and you know that you've gone too far and the spirit of play it would be interesting to talk a little bit about the spirit of play yeah. and and faith and mm-hmm. how those two things uh, work together yes um, I don't know in your program. You have Finding Hope, The Hero's Journey. We can talk about that a little bit. We haven't talked about that yet. Mm -hmm. The Hero's Journey, Finding Hope. Yeah. Those are the two things. You talked about Viktor Frankl quite a bit. Yeah, I did, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's no wonder. Yeah. And then, and the plan for failure. We can talk about that too. Which one of those would you like to talk about? Uh, maybe we can uh, um, go to Franco first because okay. I, I really like to, to talk with you uh, about suffering and like suffering, okay. dying, resurrection, because I saw it in you. I saw it in Michaela. I saw it in Jordan in your life. And mm. you must know I have prayed a lot for you guys. Uh, mm. and I listened for hours and hours to your husband. <laughs> so that was very helpful. And like Frankel mm. is like a similar person to me. I, uh, mm. I uh, <laughs> was reading his book, you know, Man's Search for Meaning. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the utility of suffering, that's uh, chapter two, a uh, key two in my book. Uh, because we have all a deep longing for meaning in life, you know. There is something so deep in, in our lives to to hunger for for this this meaning thing and when when Frankel was like raided and and put in the camps and then ultimately uh, moved to Auschwitz um, yeah it was sometimes pure luck to survive you know but mm-hmm. there wasn't there was an other element in play because Frankel noticed when uh, somebody totally gave up in life and saw no sense of living anymore, uh, what they essentially do was lay down and grab for their last cigarette, like the immediate need for mm. like, you know, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. died, died within 24 hours. You know, it was not mm. the diphtery or the, 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 the diseases or... Uh, like the bullet or the gas chamber that killed them, but uh, really no sense for living anymore. And um, mm. 
he, and, and, and he was also working like a psych, psychiatrist there to help people who had a bad wish. And uh, it was not allowed when people uh, hung themselves uh, to help them in the camps so oh, they really, oh really wow no 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 it, it, it that and and the whole totalitarian mm-hmm. system was like devised like to suck all the meaning out of you and mm-hmm. but there, there was another element i i want to talk uh, with you about that is uh, when like nietzsche uh like proclaimed god is dead you know it i mean he analyzed it uh, in in a way he said, yeah, our culture and, and, and all of us, we are sitting on this branch, uh, like this cultural branch. And when we cut it off, you know, <laughs> then we are like on our own to find purpose and meaning in life. And, and he was very hopeful we could, we could find it. But it turns out uh, uh, World War I and World War II and like uh, what happened in China and now here in the COVID times. Who, are, who have mm-hmm. really soft totalitarian, uh, like, you know, uh, forces in it. Mm-hmm. Um, you see the same thing, you know? Um, mm-hmm. uh, the people um, are, are basically so empty and so deprived of meaning in life that uh, things are so superficial. And, and, and you, you can totally escape in a hedonistic, hedonistic lifestyle and feel fine, you know, for a while. But then when, when these deeper existential questions arise, some, sometimes due to parasite stress or other, other things, a lot of people have just given up in life and are like walking, walking dead people. And, um, you know, when I when I was sick, when I was sick, I and told I was going to die. Mm-hmm. My first response was to believe the doctor knew what he was talking about, and of course, yeah. and, and and accepted his uh, prognosis. Mm-hmm. But when I went home to tell my son, because there was deep love there, because there was love, uh, true love there, I think that that was the um the spark that i needed to uh recognize my life was worthwhile my life was worthwhile because i was my son's mother and that that was enough to save myself yes wow uh yeah remarkable it was remarkable what true love can bring to life inside us. Wow. You know, the meaning of life can be reconciled through truth, truthful love. Yes. And suffering, and suffering, you know? I mean, that suffering, I was, I was pretty... Uh, sure that I knew what I was doing. It it kept me going for a very long time. But eventually, there was a rebellion inside me. I had cancer. And the lesson was there for me to learn. Mm. And, you know, it wasn't that I was going to survive necessarily at that point. But I was willing to except I was uh, going to be at the mercy of the doctors and I was willing to um, accept any help that came my way in order to... You were humble, you know. Do, do, in order to do what was necessary. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's I right. I can totally see that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it wasn't that I wouldn't have accepted it before, but something totally changed when I yeah. told my son and it's still it's still kind of a mystery to me you know uh, yeah. that 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 happened it's not a total mystery to me but it's still there's something to it that like why all of a sudden could I see a different way I could see yeah. a totally different way 
Yeah, something was open. Uh, yeah. And the necessity of that. Because mm -hmm. I, although I suffered through the next months, the suffering was nothing. <laughs> it was nothing. And, and I used prayer to sustain yeah. me. Prayer mm -hmm. and time with my friends and my family. You yeah. know, so. Wow. So there's something to that that is <sighs> going to bring us through this dystopian time. Amen. Yeah, totally. and I think that's the on, that's the only way forward, and Absolutely. that each of us has to decide to do it. Yes, we all have to take up our cross, as as Christ said, we all have yep. to take up our cross. Right, uh, and it was it was, and uh, you know, and I prayed to God, and I said, if you allow me to live, I'll talk to people, and <laughs> so uh, fact, I don't yeah. have any I don't have any fear no. of uh, retribution. Uh, you know, I, I know that it's necessary for us all just to stand up yeah. and and together, to stand up together but that's with, the, the with true, our fellow men. Yes, mm -hmm. but that's the true essence of a witness. Uh, in the Greek, yeah. the word witness is martyr, and martyr in the Dutch is martelaar, and it means like <laughs> dying for Christ, essentially. And, right, and, right. And right. that's all. Letting also, go of your ego, huh? Letting go of your ego. Yeah. Right. And and be willing to die for for the truth and for love. Yeah. Right. And and, right. and that's that's the, the the only force that is able to uh, like defeat the forces of evil. I think Satan is only afraid for people who are uh, willing to to lay their life down for other people. You know, and for the truth and, and for a better world. Yeah. These these are really dangerous people. In a yes, good sense. These are <laughs> in a good sense. Why do you say in a good sense? I mean, dangerous for the devil, you know, and for all his uh, bad intentions. I see. oh, I see. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, in in a, in a dangerous in a good way, you know, because. Uh, I had that moment uh, when the vaccinations, when I denied it, I said, no, I may uh -huh. die of COVID, no problem, but no vaccination because it's so compulsory. And uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not bowing for this at all, ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, there was something striking in your story you were telling before, because when I met you in Rai, you know, together with your husband, it was, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was such a highlight for me. So. <laughs> But there, there was something I felt on you, like a motherly spirit that was so powerful. I mean, I, I adore Jordan, but there was something in you that touched me so deep. I, I, it, it was spiritual. I, 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 I knew it at that moment that you um, didn't go through all this only for yourself and for your family, but, but you were like sort of a mother for the world and and uh not cheesy you know or like mm -hmm. uh very spiritual but like grounded in in uh, the soil uh, with your feet but mm -hmm. also uh like jacob when he when he was asleep at Bethel, you know then the heavenlies mm -hmm. were opened and the angels were coming up and down i felt like a sort of open heaven uh, above you and, yeah, and, well, I think I think that that's the hope, right? That's the hope is to be grounded. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we went and saw uh, an opera in New York. And it was, when was that? It was, a, it was with Douglas Murray. I can't remember when it was, but it was a few years ago now. Uh, great. It was a great opera. And it was called uh, The Master, The Master Singer, Meister Singer. And the story is that all these cobblers, so they, they make shoes, right? Mm -hmm. So all these cobblers uh, compete to be the master singer, and then the master singer is the, the best. You know, he's the best. And so there's the story of finding the master singer again, the new master singer, but they had to be grounded in cobbling. They had to be on the ground. You have to be. And so... Wow. You know, the kids in during COVID, their uh, ability to be on the ground with their friends and figuring out who they were and discovering yeah. 
the mysteries of the world was taken from them. Mm -hmm. And because we've also been denied, we've been taught that the transcendent isn't, uh, isn't real. We've, you know, we've been taught that. So then they were cut off at the bottom. And so, you know, because they were still able to be locally, people were still able to be locally present during COVID, we weren't allowed that. And so to be cut off from the top and the bottom, that's suicide, right? That's yeah. suicide because yeah. then your, your local meaning and your transcendent meaning are both gone. Well, then there's, then you're lost, right? You're that, atomized, you know, you are like an atom. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's right. no connection anymore. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's why it's such a disaster. And that's why we need to not only put ourselves back together locally with our families, our friends, our endeavors that are meaningful, to learn as much as we can every day, right. to be helpful to people every day. But we have to have that time for ourselves to uh, meditate and to discover within us what's true. Yes. And to move forward. And but, we're not, I don't know, we're just not taught that anymore. No, but I think um, you will play and you are already playing an important role in that. But I believe there is more to come for you. Uh, well, to thanks do that. for the encouragement. I need that yeah. encouragement. Yeah, <laughs> I, do. I can totally see that. So, And I felt it. And, and I want to give it back to you uh, that I felt it and, and I saw it and and uh, acknowledge it well, thank so, you. so mm. much yeah I, I believe you will help people um, uh, bring them back to life again like birth process you know like a rebirth mm -hmm. in in the most profound sa sense of of, of, the, of the word to uh like have connection feel feel the connection back and 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 all the values that uh, are attached to it to, yes. to bring that to life again you know and, and find meaning right. in it, and not, and not only like in the family structure, but also like globally. Yeah, well, in the family structure is the local. That's where we have to start, each of us, right? right? In order for it to be a global change, we have to start at home. Yes. We have to start with those people in our lives that we haven't been able to get along with. We have mm -hmm. to figure that out. That was, so we were, we went to a, a small mass on New Year's Eve with some friends mm -hmm. uh, at a local university chapel. And they asked me just before the end if I wanted to say anything. I had nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to say. But I stood up because I was asked to stand up. I stood up. And what came to mind to speak about was uh, the um, – if – if there's anyone in your life that you're not getting along with, so if there's something that's stopping you from truthful communication with someone and spirit of play, then your job is to investigate that and to take what you know of that person and to uh, en enrich that view of them to take in to everything about their life, right? So to to uh, look, I suggested a personality traits, positive personality traits, a list of positive personality, and go through that and identify all the things you know about that other person so that you can take your narrow view of what you have been focused on and broaden it out. And that will shrink what it what it was that was bothering you because you'll realize that it's uh trivial you'll realize mm -hmm. the triviality compared to who that person is yes and the complexity the complexity of those people so that you can have uh so that you and the reason that you do that it isn't necessarily to get along with other people it's so that you can have a clear uh understanding of when you meditate of what the next right move is because you as soon you know when i pray the rosary in the morning uh i pray i pray for 
global i play pray you know for the sick and dying and i pray right. for the people who are in war and i pray but i also pray for my father and my mo- and my mother who's passed away and you know and my sisters mm-hmm. and everything. so i pray for the local as well yeah. but i've begun to realize that during those prayers i can tell whether i'm attached to them or not or whether they're or whether i'm detached right mm-hmm. so i can tell if there's anything that i'm holding on to with my ego that i'm holding on because i'm misunderstood or whatever that is and if that's the case then that's my job for the day is to uh is to create yeah. that tr- that true love there yes amen and so and so i i think that if i'm going to do anything that's that's that has a lot to do with where i can be helpful i hope i mm-hmm. hope and yeah um, i i i see it's worthwhile right it's worthwhile uh-huh. it's super worthwhile uh, absolutely and it's so necessary i mean uh, th- there are a lot of people who are like uh, when you see it through the lens like spiritually they are stuck mm-hmm. in the bo- in the birth canal you know mm-hmm. by all sort of things in life and people like you who went through this deep uh painful uh, season and came out who you made up and and came out of the other side you are like the seed who died you know but then uh then you can bear fruit and um mm. it's like jesus said it, it has to fall in the ground die and then yes yes come and i saw that with jordan the same thing i mean michaela the same thing when when you hear you guys talk there is a freshness there is something that is alive you know and and that that is helping people uh, you you really pull people through uh, in a sense uh, where they got stuck and it's not only the words or the concepts of the ideas that's important too of course but it's you, you live through an experience and then the experience is like a sp- spiritual realm people can tap into and mm-hmm. like the 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 bird is freed essentially that 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 is something i deeply feel about you and your family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah well that's good that's good uh, that's helpful because we you know are we're starting our next five months of uh traveling around and speaking to people again and uh this five months isn't going to be as uh intense as the last five months because jordan's going to take three weeks to finish his book and so that'll right. be a quiet time uh a contemplative time and mm. so we're also looking forward to that but you know traveling around and speaking to lots of people it's it's an opportunity to connect uh but it al- it also kind of feels like you're on a ship on the ocean you know you're on a ship on the ocean and you're coming in when you come into a city you come into port and you don't know what's there <laughs> you don't know what's there but uh it doesn't matter it all has to be looked at you know that's just like on my house my house we i've renovated this house three times it's just a little <laughs> house it's just a little house but you know there would we renovated we put a third story on we in, improved the basement but we never finished the kitchen and so right before covid i thought okay i'm going to i'm going to finish the house <laughs> and when i did i finished the kitchen i renovated the kitchen uh i decided that the upstairs the bathroom it wasn't done well either so it was a bathroom kitchen i was going to do but i ended up uncovering that there was black mold in the basement so mm. we got that all figured out uh so there so you know there were other things this is the thing is when you want when you are going to pay attention you're going to find out things that you have no idea that are there that are essential because you can't be living in a place with black mold that's no. not going to be healthy 
No. But you, but I never would have known that unless I saw that local problem where we had kind of a kitchen made of plywood and it it needed to be finished in a uh, in a more um, uh, complete way, and that just led me to the rest of the problems. The back deck was rotting. I redid the back deck, you know. So I just made sure that everything. Everything and and it'll have to happen again, right? It'll have to happen again. Yeah, but hopefully it never not ends. for 20, 20, 20, 20 years, or maybe someone else can do it next time. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'm done. Good. Maybe I'm done because the house is actually in good shape, and mm. we and we're in bed. It's funny. It's it's as if we put to the house together and we put ourselves together yes. at the same time. That's true. <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. A nice yeah. metaphor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and the people of the neighborhood, some of them were supportive, but some of them are definitely not supportive. And they no. weren't supportive of the renovation either. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done here, it, you know, allows Jordan and I to work and to have a, a, a clear idea of, of what we're doing because everything is in its place. And so then right. we can leave the house and go out and, and uh, uh, share with the world what uh, what needs to be said. Yes. What needs to be said and needs to be discovered. Yeah, so it has to happen at every level. Eh? Right. Uh, I was thinking, uh, when you were, were talking, I was thinking about something. Um, in the holiday season, we are always going to like a place in Friesland. It's like a province in, in the Netherlands. And um, for a few days as a family, I mean, my mother uh, has uh, 12 mm -hmm. children, so we have a lot mm -hmm. of, <laughs> just like a uh, whole community. But in the COVID yes. times, yeah, yeah, it, it, in the COVID times, there were, was a real split in the family. Like the polar uh, mm -hmm. uh, forces uh, were also in our, our family and in our own hearts, but also in, in the family, you know, mm -hmm. and it got nasty sometimes and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that was actually terrible so we had to do s some work too and what we did was uh, mm -hmm. called um, I'm, I'm writing a paper with Michaela uh, at the moment it's called mm -hmm. letters to the future and it's also built on life crafting oh, and goal yes. setting but yes it's and and uh, we call this uh, this branch you know we call that uh, uh, family future crafting it's specially designed for families and what mm -hmm. we do uh, we are not looking to the past for a moment, but we totally mm -hmm. envision the future first from your own perspective. And then mm -hmm. you uh, contemplate on, okay, when I change nothing or nothing changes, what will the, the world look like in five years? And then mm -hmm. con contrast that with, okay, when the world is ideal, what will the world look like in five years? And then do mm -hmm. some goal setting and then make a plan and then make it public. And what we did, we, uh, uh, we made, mm -hmm. made like duos and uh, let them talk to each other. Uh, and uh, we, we, we tried to encourage them to <laughs> step a little bit out of your comfort zone, you know. And yes. then we, we brought it back and, and make a synthesis out of it, like a vision for the future for our family. And... Mm -hmm something magical happened uh, because every uh, person started but because my mother kicked things off you know uh, mm -hmm. so it was deeply uh, relational in the uh, like in the generations my own mm -hmm. children were there my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and then my father and mother you know so that's very very nice so my, my mother mm -hmm. uh, kicked things off and then uh, we all shared our vision for the future and for our family and then my mm -hmm. father and made a synthesis out of all this and he landed on love again you know and then we we got all a little bit homework and we said okay from this place of love and connection and 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 togetherness okay find somebody uh, who you lost this uh, yes this this last three years you know and i went to my uh, um younger sister i said hey i lost you and I think I take responsibility. I love you. 
And uh, mm -hmm. we think different about a lot of things I know, but you are my sister and I love you. And I want to be involved in your life, you know? And I, know, I don't know. It was so heavenly and beautiful. And, and that's something I, I want to give to the world as well, you know? Um, mm -hmm. That's a good idea. So tell me again. So at the beginning of this process that you just <laughs> described, yeah. you said that two, two people get together. What did they do? First of all, um, uh, before our holiday together, we send them this yeah. like small uh, like questionnaire to fill in, you know, with these okay. questions. So okay. you do some life crafting, future crafting first for yourself, of course. Right. And, and then when we were on holiday, we came together and, okay, we, uh, we did some uh, introduction and said, okay, you guys, you, you thought about this. Uh, great. So this mm -hmm. is what we're going to do. Uh, we make duos and then, uh, yeah, share your vision. And, and so with, just the, with one, what, one person with one other person. Right, yes? right, right. Okay. Yes, right. because okay. we, we thought, mm -hmm. yes, in, uh, yes, <laughs> duos is, I think, a Dutch word. Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the individual, take responsibility yes. for yourself, you know, then share, yeah. make it public, yeah. you know, yeah. and the, the goal was, um, listen, try to understand, and maybe we get a synthesis out of this, you know, that was the goal. Right. 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 And, and, and we don't look back. And um, uh, for, for now, we only look to the mm -hmm. future. And that was very helpful as a tool. You know? mm. Because mm. Um, then mm. mm -hmm. that's, that's the same process as you described before. You know, um, something happens in your head and your, your heart because you are now uh, putting yourself forward into the future, in the possible future. And then you see uh, you're all alive because okay. every... every um, the person that shared their vision said, yeah, we were thinking alike. And, and, and uh, before that, they were very like uh, opposite of each other, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how fast hey, you uh, mentioned uh, how fast you can find uh, like positive things in other people when you look to the personality. But this is also yes. a very uh, handy and, and powerful tool to look to get to the future you desire mm. you know and mm -hmm. then you see okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah we are different but there is a common denominator that binds us so but i wonder yeah. what we could do you know for the people who are overly concerned with the environment mm -hmm. talking you know it's so difficult to talk to people who are catastrophizing about the world it's true um i wonder if you could use your process with someone like that to have a vision for the future to share a vision for the future yeah. and to find, find some common ground. I wonder if we could find some common ground. Yeah, I think that's, that's totally possible. Michaela has a website. It's called Ikigai TV, like finding right. your Ikigai. Iki eh? uh, that's a, that's a, a, a Japanese concept. A Japanese term, right? Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Uh, but it's essentially the same thing. And, um, she has a website and there you can find all these tools and you can find it on my website too, creativelifecrafting.com. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And Michaela and I work together. She is more like the scholarly person and me uh, like doing the practical uh, application of it. But I like the, the scientific mm -hmm. side as well. But uh, yeah, I like the practical things and uh, like firm, firmly standing on the ground and make it available mm -hmm. for, for uh, them most needed because I want to... Um, mm -hmm. To give my book uh, to, uh, to the places where my, my wife is going, like Gaza, and uh, yes. Uh, yes, France, and France, you know, and and in the prisons everywhere where it's so dark, I want to, to give my book for free, you know. So I I will set mm -hmm. it up in in such a uh, fashion that uh, mm -hmm. I can make it available, like basically for free for them. Oh, that's so, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then it it has its ripple effect, you know. So in answering your question, mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely possible when these people um, like are brought out their uh, prison of their own heads, where they are so afraid yes. and so stressed out mm -hmm. and so anxious. Mm -hmm. 
because mm -hmm. for them it functions like a, 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 a religion, but not not actually a religion. It's more cultish, you know. Uh, yes. I think we we, yes. we, uh, we 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 give a religion a bad rap because it's not religion. It's it's cultish because their uh, mm -hmm. religious impulse is like misused. It's like hacked, you know, in a, in a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Um, um, yeah, and, worshiping and idols. Yeah. Yeah, making an yeah. image uh, of God of their own, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, the, the significance and, and the, 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 the potence of of this way of like working with this tool is is great. Is is actually transforming. So yeah. So how do you think? Hmm. So how do you think that you can get your book into prisons? Is it yeah, possible? I, yeah, well, absolutely. It's absolutely possible. And um, it, it might be very useful that I give some like online um, online training or I go myself. Right. Because uh -huh. um, when you are physically there, uh, other things happen, you know. I, I set the book up in such a way that I uh, use seven different um, like entrances to yeah. people like there are, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, this graphic designs and these quotes and like these pictures and, and, and my stories. And but it's also affirmations, you know, <laughs> again, mm -hmm. get it out there, you know, and it acts like like a summary and then write. Uh, it's it's also found in, in in science that that writing is so important to uh, like being grounded again and being uh, transformed you know like uh, speaking and writing and meditating it's it's a deeply practical book you know um, mm -hmm. and and it's 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 also in a way to awaken people to the reality of uh, uh, what it is to have a meaning in life and it's all um, it's not a religious book but for me, the ultimate meaning is Jesus Christ. You know, when mm -hmm. when you read in John, John, uh, the first book of John, then you you read that uh, the word logos is um, is, is is also uh, uh, means also meaning and purpose. You know, logos, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, Viktor Frankl uh, called his therapy logotherapy. You know, mm -hmm. finding meaning in unwanted suffering. And um, uh, finding meaning uh, maybe in a place you didn't expect to find it. And um, um, I believe that when Jesus say, hey, I am the true source, I am meaning, you know. And, and uh, in my last key, in my last chapter, I say the cross, you know, is like the magical super key that fits in, fits in every situation, in every heart, in every soul. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, th then th that's that's the same thing uh, like in, in chapter two um, when you see that dying and, and suffering leads to a resurrection in one mm -hmm. or the other form and then when you can approach it like like that as you did um, okay maybe I die maybe I live but I, I will uh, make this count you know for me mm -hmm. for my family for the world when you approach yeah. it like that then the cross uh, will will be like like a magical super key that is so transformative um, that that yeah that that's bizarre because when when I came to faith I had a one on one meeting with Jesus Christ when I was twenty four mm. mm -hmm. and um, before that I, I had an existential crisis I was suffering. I, I, I found no meaning in life. I, you know, I, ha I had two children already, uh, three children mm -hmm. actually. I was like a physical education teacher. Uh, I was healthy. I was strong. I have I had my family. I had a beautiful life. I mean, I had the life, right? So, mm -hmm. but I I felt so terribly empty inside. You know, and um, then um, I became in contact with uh, some Congolese uh, uh, people. And they had this like poor but beautiful church worshiping Jesus in a manner I had never seen before, and and like spiritually I was like hit, and um, and okay, and and then we we started to go there, and uh, 
and then after that i say okay i don't know if you exist but <laughs> if you exist let me know you know and then i and mm -hmm. one night when when i i uh, read um i read uh, like romans uh, 10 verse 9 and 10 when you proclaim you see that again you know when you proclaim jesus as lord and you believe in your mm -hmm. heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved and i said okay i believe this and then like the roof uh, went open and there jesus stood you know with, uh, mm. with his wounds in his, his uh, mm. and and he didn't say anything to me but i felt so much love for me and that mm -hmm. that deep hole mm -hmm. of existential emptiness it was mm -hmm. totally gone after that it was so mm -hmm. so uh, such a huge miracle for me still to this day i mean it's 17 18 years ago uh, it, it never something? stopped it never mm -hmm. stopped and and mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, after that, I encouraged so many young people with this story. Uh, I mean, I, I talked to hundreds, hundreds and maybe thousands of students already about this story. And every time when people are agnostic or atheistic or they are like Muslims, it doesn't matter. Everybody wants to have this deep connection with God and real right. meaning, right. you know, and, 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 and this S mm -hmm. super key um in your life to to mm -hmm. not only be transformed yourself but that you are a key yourself you know that in your right. testimony and in your like yeah. acting out in the world that you can unlock people to to come to their full potential essentially mm -hmm. and that's yes. my dream and that's my dream yes absolutely because you know each of us each of us obviously has a unique purpose and if we yes. don't, if we don't uh, materialize that purpose, then uh, there's something missing in the world. Yes, our contribution, our our contribution is missing, and there yes. is nobody else who has that contribution. Each no. of us has our own contribution. Yes, I yeah. heard I, I heard a guy not uh, not long ago. He said, "For me, when when I felt really dying." Uh, the things I did in that time, he said, that's my God-given genius and my unique gift to the world. Mm -hmm. That then and there, and, and that's what, what I want to, to, to say also to your audience and to young people. Guys, don't be afraid of suffering. There is so much potential, so, so much life. And society is telling you all these lies about being happy, you know. When you are unhappy, you are like uh, you you are punished twice. You are unhappy, and then you are punished over it because you are not happy. You know, you have to encourage mm -hmm. young, young young people and say, "Hey, it's okay to be unhappy. That's normal." And and mm -hmm. there are chances and, and and potential opportunities. They are only found in unhappiness and in suffering and in problems. And and we have to comfort young people. Not to uh, hide in hedonistic uh, lives, you know. When when you look to the hero's journey, some heroes they uh, deny the call, you know. They mm -hmm. they 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 don't go over this like uh, uh, step into the the, the, the unknown. And um, when we as as adults and and people who, who who has this capacity to help. Um, when we give this, this example of, hey, suffering, it's terrible. It's terrible, you know, but there is something to be found. And, and then lift them up, you know, and suffer with them and, and, and give them advice and let them know you love them and, and, and just want the best for them. And something good will come out of this. When we, mm -hmm. when we commit to that, like to, to, to devote our lives to that, I think we set the next generation up for success and for like, the sky is the limit because there is so much potential out there. I believe that truly. Mm -hmm.